Hello, my radiant being. I am absolutely delighted to be here with you this morning across time and space and all dimensions. And wherever you are, whoever you are, and whenever you are, always know that you are not just your physical being, but you are also a radiant being, a being of energy. That's your beautiful energy body. And that's what we do here in the GOE. We look after the radiant being to make it more shiny, to make it more radiant, to give it the attention that it deserves and the attention that it then rewards with so many better things in our lives, better feelings, better sensations, better intelligence, better thought, better actions. All things work better with energy. So I'm here today, I have my energy cup and it says we love energy on the other side with my energy drink. Ah. Oh. And I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing with you some more news and telling you about a really amazing thing. <laughs> that I just love to bits and I know you're going to love that too and I'm hoping that many among you will take that opportunity and do something with it. It's quite funny, uh, I think I must be in the eye of the storm. We have been battered by most enormous storms relentlessly for nearly a month now and just this morning the sun is shining just through the window and it's radiant, it's beautiful, looks like the first day of spring. But, well, that's what life is like, isn't it? We uh, have our storms and we have our moments of stillness. And really, that brings me to this idea of talking to you this morning about moments. We say, your happiness matters. And we say, we want to be happier in life. And we are looking for happiness. In all things we do, we always look for happiness. That's what human beings are designed to do. This is how they know what good food to eat and bad food to avoid, what people to be attracted to and which ones to stay away from. What, what, this is our compass given to us by the great creative order. The things that make us happy are the things that are good for us. And like so many other things, the concept of happiness is so misunderstood. It's so misunderstood. There's this idea that you suffer and suffer and suffer, and then something happens, like you die or you retire or you win the lottery or you find the one. And then all of a sudden, all the suffering goes away and you live in everlasting bliss forever. And that's totally the wrong idea of happiness. If um, our events have taught us anything at all, happiness is a moment. It's a flashing moment. Like all events, happiness is a flash through our energy body. That's so fast, it's faster than the blink of an eye. And we can kind of get confused consciously because once this flash of happiness has happened, it keeps our energy level up for quite some time afterwards. And then we are, yeah, like, like we are in love, we are floating through life, the birds sing for us and land on our shoulders and the Red Seas part and nothing can trouble our happiness. And so we tend to think that happiness is sort of a long drawn out thing, like a chewing gum that's been stretched out. But it's not. Happiness is a moment. It's that original lightning strike moment that goes through you. And then all of a sudden, yeah, we have cut, been catapulted up to a higher state. Ah, and that is really so important to understand that we are not looking for great big sort of stretches of happiness. What we're looking for is these moments. When you do that, it sort of changes the way you think about life and you think about what you're trying to accomplish in life. 
for example, a lot of people, they will just suffer and suffer and suffer so that by the time they retire, they have this, this little cottage with the roses around the door and a nice garden and they move in and then live happily ever after. And that just doesn't work. It's not right. It's not how it works. You can't build some sort of a sanctuary in the heart and then sit yourself in it and now like, where's my happiness? Happiness are moments. And these moments can happen anywhere, anytime, with anyone at all, and in the most unexpected of circumstances. And when they happen in these unexpected circumstances, completely out of the blue, then I consider them to be miracles. And that's what I consider to be a miracle. Just a, this lightning strike of joy, of enlightenment, of energy, and you just know this extraordinary thing has happened and you've learned, you've grown up, you've become wiser, you have just gained a huge, huge treasure for you personally in your life. And that is how star memories work. This is how star memories work. They are exactly about these moments. They may have like a story around them, like once upon a time in a faraway kingdom, I went on holiday in Mallorca. And then the story goes on and on and on. And somewhere inside of that story, there is that moment. And on the third day, when I got up really early and I went to the beach, all of a sudden there I saw the moon and this enormously big star twinkling at me. And I just had this wave of joy rush through me. And yeah, and that's our star moment. It's, a, it's just a moment inside a general story that contains that moment right within. So I really feel that's super important for us to understand for two, for two reasons. Now, with Star Matrix, we are looking, we're looking to recover these moments and to remember them and to re-feel them, re-experience them, to resonate with them, resonate with that aspect across time and space. So that creates then a connection between us and that aspect. And I just, just love that so much because then information flows freely between us and this aspect and it's so healing, so connecting, so relieving in many ways. Yes, you know, that's that's who I really am. That's what I'm all about. This sort of extraordinary beauty and mystery. That's the one side of it. Sorry, I just drifted off there. <laughs> the glory of it. The other side is to really understand that we need to start looking for the moments here and now in our real lives, in our everyday lives. No matter how limited, how boring, how rubbishy your life might be at the moment, the fact is that these star moments await you. They're there. They are invitations. They are invitations to have star moments. <sighs> My energy mind just suggested an example. So you have like a, an old uh, thing that, I don't know, you got from your grandmother. And it's been sitting on the windowsill for 30 years, you know, and all you do is you dust it every so often, vaguely think about grandma or not, because you're worrying about something else. But on this day, you go to dust this thing and the light's just right. And the time's just right. And the moment's just right. And a sun shaft strikes this thing and kaboom. <gasps> you're having a star moment with this little statue from your grandmother. And at this moment, there's this connection again to grandmother and that she loved you. And, and again, something wonderful has happened. It's bringing tears to my eyes. And this can't happen if we are in our heads and worrying about this, that and the other and Huh. I think one of the biggest lessons of the star memories is to remember how to just 
not think about your problems for a bit and to create a space. And the way how we do that, that wouldn't be a bullet pointed diagram hanging on a whiteboard. That would be inside your own memories. You know, as, as you sort of explore this, the last time this happened, what state was I in? Can I get into that state of just drifting with the tides here for a moment and create that space for these star things that could be happening all the time, probably should be happening all the time, to be happening more often and just blow our socks off with how amazing life can actually be. Even if you're not lying on a beach in Marbella, even if you're not surrounded by dozens of sexy people holding out cocktails to you, even if you're not on your own private yacht or on your own private island, but just in your own space, in your own reality. That's, for me, the wonder of it that you don't have to do anything really you don't have to lose weight or you don't have to go younger or you don't have to learn anything new really you just need to remember and wow you know sorry i'm just just blown away by this i can today actually see some people on my screen commercier and paul and some other people that's 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 remarkable that's the first time this has happened. And Janine, hello, Janine. Lovely to see you here. Okay, guys. So what I wanted to tell you about was a really amazing thing to do with Star Matrix. Now, we recently had Halloween here. And you may be aware that um, the witches have a so-called Book of Shadows. And what that is, is when you first decide to be a witch, you get yourself a notebook and you start writing all your spells that you discover into your book of shadows. And that's fun. And of course, I have such a thing. <laughs> it contains all sorts of other things apart from spells. But I am going to suggest now to everybody, regardless whether you're doing this course or not, I don't care. What we need is something new. And that's got to start literally like today. The book of stars. We need a book of stars. So if you are on the course, and if you're not, go out and get yourself, before we get started, a nice big empty, nice big empty book here. See, it used to be called Project 11. And now it's called the book of stars. And in that book, we're going to write, number one, my first star memory with a little title over it. I was talking about like the stars on the beach there in Marbella. Let's say that would be the first one that came to us. So we write um, Marbella Starrise Memory. And then we'll put a uh, approximate date, doesn't matter sort of if, at least it's in the ballpark. Say, you know, you were about 25 when that happened. And you can put 25 years old and then work out the date from there and write it and leave a little space underneath it. And that's your memory number one. And then memory number two and star memory number three. And as they come to you, you always take a moment. And this is really important because what we're doing here is we're training the conscious mind. The memories are all there. They are in your energy body. They're in your brain. They're in your physical body. They're stored. Everything's there. This is all about training our minds to pay attention. So then you keep writing your stars and numbering them in your book of stars. And now imagine you had such a thing and you'd been doing this for five years. What an amazing thing would that be? Would it even be possible if you owned that? that you could think about your life and thought your life was a waste of time or that you should have done more or that you should have done better or that you are some kind of failure in some shape or form. If you had your very own book of stars, isn't that the most wonderful thing? 
Now, of course, we can do all sorts of other things with that. And of course, we can have this also in sanctuary. That's great, it, just in case your house goes on fire. But please, that's such a, it's so magical and so right and so amazing. I just cannot believe that we are the first people ever to be doing that. It's it's insane, isn't it? To just actually write down your best memories so that your conscious mind can get on board. And of course, we are doing in the in the course we're doing the star matrix. So the fact that they are actually numbered and dated has a lot to do with putting this whole thing together at the end. But even so, having your own book of stars. Wow, and my energy mind just suggested, if you have an elderly relative that you like, why not start a book of stars for them? They can tell you the story and you write down, you know, just the name and just a short description and possibly where it was and how old they were. It doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to trigger the memory so that when you're looking at, consciously looking at this, you can actually read it back and you know what that is and then you can work with that. I mean, that would be a marvelous thing. And if you're like dreading visiting grandma in the old people's home and it's going to be terrible, perhaps it doesn't have to be so terrible. Perhaps this can be a project you can do with an elderly relative, you know, to, to do something amazing and for you to learn something amazing as well. I just think it's a wonderful wonderful thing. <sighs> I had a whole load of things planned to say and they've just gone straight out of my mind because I just gotten into this whole into this whole thing of what would happen if we started freely sharing our star memories with other people and if we started inquiring into other people's star memories, what we would learn in the process. Wow, you know, um, many years ago, and some of you may be way too young to remember this, there was a very famous book and motivational series called Chicken Soup for the Soul. And their people were telling stories about something amazing that had happened to them or something amazing that they had learned. And I used to love that. They were incredibly educational and incredibly information rich. And so, yeah, I mean, let's go way beyond chicken soup for the sick soul there. You know, let's go way beyond that. I think that our star memories have the power not just to inspire and teach ourselves, but also to inspire and teach other people. We just need to create new platforms for where this can actually happen because really there isn't much of a platform other than perhaps in church in some churches where the congregation is allowed to testify no but that's that thing isn't it to say something amazing that's happened and then the other people who are connected to you are sharing in that that experience <sighs> Thank you for the love bubbles that I'm seeing. That's really, really lovely. Good morning, Barbara. And Ilka, hi, good morning. That's really nice. Cool. Well, there's lots of nice to have lots of people here today. Um, I'm still sort of between super excited and also a little bit overwhelmed by this whole star matrix thing. Because it is just such a turning point it's just such a change moment that I'm really quite I can't see the end result of this the repercussions of this when I think about it it just ripples and ripples and ripples and ripples and I'm like whoa this is big this is really really big it really is big <laughs> yes big it is okay guys I know that you would like to do an exercise with me and I like to do an exercise with you because that brings us all sort of together on the same page. And consciously, I have absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to do here. So I'm going to just ask my dear energy mind to give me something for all of us together here that enlightens us, enlivens us, 
makes us glad that we're here, makes us glad that we're alive, and just brings us together as radiant beings and as modern energists. <laughs> <sighs> okay, yeah, why not? <sighs> Join me and take just a deep breath in and out. <sighs> and if you can, let's just um, look down sort of for a moment on the ground and say, okay, so that's physical reality. It has gravity and we are here. If you like, you can sort of wriggle your feet a little bit in your shoes or on the ground. Just make sure we're grounded here in physical reality. I'm here. Let's just say that. I am here. I'm here today, right here, in physical reality. Cool. And so we'll can just look straight ahead for a moment. Look straight ahead. Straight ahead. If you're looking at a screen, you'll probably be seeing me. <laughs> And I'll see you too. And that's sort of our world of human doings, technology and art and science and all the busy work that human beings engage in to keep themselves amused in one way or the other, because human beings are essentially children in the universe and they like to play. They like to play with their many, many toys and they like to invent toys. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a lovely thing. So we are in physical reality and then we have this world of human doings, you know, that are sometimes called the hard. But actually it can be quite easy if you play your energy cards right. Okay, and now look up. Just turn your eyes up. I'm doing nothing. I'm just sitting here. Just look up. Right up. And above the ceiling, way above the ceiling, look through the ceilings, the many ceilings, and look through the clouds. And higher. And high up there, we have this other level of existence that I sometimes call the star fields. And that's the level of existence where our star person lives, where our star matrix resides where our star memories are. And it may be so that all the star memories of all the people who ever lived are up there. And that's why the ancient cultures used to say that our ancestors are stars in the sky. Perhaps they didn't mean that literally, perhaps they meant it metaphorically. Perhaps the power of the star memories is what creates the Akashic Records. Wow, that'd be a thought, wouldn't it? But I'd just like you to just reach and tap into that and let the energy from those stars, those high, high, high stars, way above human conception and the heart, just let that gently rain down upon us all today. and sense for that. And it is completely innocent energy. It knows no suffering. It knows no pain. It knows no trauma. It only knows love and light and an infinity of beauty. We can move our hands out of the heart position and make a gesture of receiving and saying, yes, let the stars rain upon me from all times, all spaces, all dimensions. This is where we connect with the other beings of the universe and we connect in love and in light. Whew. Ah. Thank you, dear energy mind. That was beautiful. <laughs> oh, I do hope you enjoyed that. And 
sort of as a meta comment, what comes to mind, this movement that was there, looking at the ground, looking straight ahead, and then looking right up. That's actually also a really nice sort of an invitation to get ourselves, get our heads out of the stress sand of the hard, and to like connect the planes, bring the planes together, and let the information and energy travel freely. Oh, I thought that was really nice. I hope you liked it too. It's a very nice thing. It's a lovely thing to have a really good relationship with your dear energy mind. It just has the capacity to bring us such wonderfully positive, radiant, healing things. And I'm truly, eternally grateful for that. <laughs> cool. So next time I'm going to get upset whilst looking at my social media stream and the many wrongnesses that are being perpetuated, I can just stop and look right down at my feet and wriggle them a little, look straight ahead and look right up. <sighs> and then I can feel, oops, then I can feel reconnected again. Cool, right. So I honest, I hope you enjoyed that. That's really all I want to do with us this morning. That leaves us in a, in a lovely, positive, happy state, I encourage you to now go out and start looking for those moments, those star moments that can literally happen anytime, anywhere, and with any kind of person at all. And when they hit us like a surprise, then they are absolutely a miracle. Well, that was fantastic. Thank you for being with me today. I really, really enjoyed that. And I really look forward to connecting with you more on the group. And let's keep going out there. Let's bring life, bring love, bring light. Keep our own energy levels high and really encourage that radiant being within to shine brighter than it's ever done before. Wishing you a wonderful Sunday and a week ahead. And I'll see you again next week for Sunday with Sylvia. Bye. <laughs> well, that was fun.